Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I'm on the Plug and Alliance channel, and we have got the honor and the privilege of talking to one Mr. Glenn Schick for the second time on this channel. Glenn, how are you today? I am well, Justin. How about you? Pretty good. Thanks again for joining us. In case you're not familiar with Glenn, he is a multi-platinum selling mastering engineer. He's worked with everyone from Justin Bieber to J. Cole, recently on releases for Future, Lupe Fiasco, Noel Gallagher, and a whole bunch more. And if you remember our prior interview with Glenn, we were talking in some great length about his approach to mastering in general and about his kind of new digital nomad lifestyle where he's mastering 100% in the box with plugins like those from Plugin Lines and mastering exclusively on headphones. And correct me if I'm wrong, Glenn, you're even using, using a standing desk these days. Is that right? Um, actually, I've always been standing since I went uh, kind of nomad -y. And um, that's been, actually, it's not new. It's since 2012. So. <laughs> Wow. All right. But what we're really here to talk about today is your approach to dynamics processing in mastering. And the great excuse we have to talk about this stuff today is a new plugin from Adapter Audio called Sculpt. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Sculpt is a plugin that's been designed for mix bus and mastering applications. And it's got four separate modules in there, an upward compressor, which is kind of unique and different compared to a lot of other dynamic control devices, your conventional downward compression, and these Sculpt sections, a tone section and a transient section. They're really interesting. And I'm excited to talk to you about this, Glenn, because you're one of these mastering engineers who doesn't lean super heavily on compression, to my understanding. You use compression often more as kind of like a tone box. And one of the interesting things Sculpt does, in addition to offering new ways of doing dynamic control, is you can almost uncompress things a little bit, almost kind of preserve and restore dynamics. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your approach to using this plugin, what you thought made it interesting in the world of dynamic range control? Sure. Uh, the thing that I found special about Sculpt was the ability to restore dynamics and transients. And, uh, you know, there's a million compressors and everybody has, um, you know, 30 instances of compression on their mix tracks. And, you know, when it gets to me, it doesn't really need more compression. And as you said, I've used some compression before as just kind of a tone box. But uh, for the most part, Sculpt is a different and new tool. And uh, I've been using it to kind of bring some life back to things now. Mm. And in addition to it also being dynamics focused, I think there's also kind of a frequency dependent control in there. You have some of the tonal shape functionality and also there's the transient shaping functionality. Did you find either of those useful? It works as four separate modules that are running in parallel and the, the sum of it is one process. So you're basically balancing these four modules and you get a result depending on what you've you know put into each of these modules because the modules can also uh, be set differently. So uh, for instance, like the first module is for stuff that's quieter than the threshold, and the second module is for stuff above the threshold. So you know you're working in two different parts of the dynamics, and you can really start balancing things uh, using those. So the uh, the tone. Uh, lets you kind of work with frequency and you can dial in stuff with, uh, it looks like an EQ, but it's not an equalizer. Uh, it basically just tells the program what to process. And uh, so you can dial in like a low shelf or a high shelf or a, a bell curve in something. Uh, you know, I've even used it as a, a de at one point. So. Right. Yeah, there, there is this almost dynamically sensitive tonal reshaping component to it. Uh, there's also some other somewhat unique features in there that you don't see in a lot of places like gain range. There's something called the AR Adapt, which I'm trying to wrap my head around. Uh, can you give us a sense of uh, what those two functions are useful for? Yeah, th there's a bunch of new terms on this, and uh, it took me a little bit to digest. Um, it, it's... Uh, they're not the same thing you see on every compressor because it's not like every compressor. And um, the uh, AR Adapt is an attack release that is frequency dependent. And, you know, so like a bass note has much slower 
uh, movement than you know high frequency does. So uh, it actually works uh, automatically to set your attacks and releases if you choose to. You can also just manually set it the way you'd normally set a compressor. Uh, it's got all those same tools, but if you want to switch on and you actually have to click on, uh, there's a, a tool in here uh, and you actually have to turn on that function uh, to get the AR adapt. Uh, and it's really cool once you get, it's really natural sounding. It doesn't sound weird once you use it. So. Very cool. I think uh, one of my favorite things here is uh, just the graphical interface. It's such a, a deep plugin that does so many things that you won't find in other plugins commonly, but it's all laid out in a, a pretty simple way. How did you find uh, navigating? It was intuitive for you at all to start with? Yeah, except for a few of the terms on a couple of the parameters, like we were talking about, like AR adapt, which you don't see anywhere else. The graphics part of it was a breeze. So uh, you can see kind of there's two windows here, and the bottom window is your frequency window, and your top is your uh, reduction or uh, uh, expansion. And you can see there's uh, blue and uh, blue on top here, and the uh, brown color, oranges color, uh, which is expansion. And uh, so you can kind of see the compression and expansion immediately. And the bottom graph lets you kind of see how it's changing in real time uh, due to frequency. Very cool. Now, I remember one of the things I was talking to the creator of this plugin about, Mark Adamo, was the kind of auto gain compensation feature in here. There's an automatic makeup gain, which I believe you were helpful in giving some feedback and troubleshooting on. And this was one of the things he was really proud about, the idea that it's kind of auto gain control that actually works, where it's doing makeup gain in a way that takes perceived loudness into account. Did you notice anything special there in the makeup gain feature that was automatic in this plugin? Well, it, especially using stuff like expansion, uh, your volumes go through the roof. And, um, you know, compression can fool your ears sometimes as far as uh, perceived volume versus actual volume. So the, uh, the auto gain is really nice. It actually is pretty transparent. You just click on, there's a little uh, auto gain function here. They give it a few seconds. It automatically levels everything for you. Uh, and it's pretty flawless. So. Great. Now, you did a uh, brief demo video on this plugin using a track from the late, great Young Dolph, uh, a great hip hop artist. Uh, what kinds of things were you using Sculpt to do on that particular track? Some of the tools I used on that were compression up, uh, compression down. Um, I didn't really use that much of the tone, but I did use some of the transient on that. And it lets you really uh, hone in. The, the thing that I love is on the side of each module here, there's these little gain sliders. Mm. And so you have two places basically to adjust not only each module, but the overall range of the whole plugin. Mm -hmm. So up here I can go in and say, I just want to kind of bring everything I've set down to a certain window that can just process within that. And uh, the other thing they have is in the compressions, uh, there's a little thing called bound. And bound actually changes your uh, uh, amount of uh, processing that it'll do, but in a gentler way. So you can set like a hard limit for, uh, you know, what kind of processing you want for the individual modules for the whole four modules and also if you like a more gentle approach you can go to the bound interesting so you have this option of kind of really digging in hard to really hear the changes that you're making and then kind of dial back on them quite easily yeah which is really nice when you're balancing the different modules and uh because you can solo or mute any of the modules uh but it's really the four modules kind of work together well, so it's nice to be able to balance them with those tools. Yeah. Now, one of the things that's in here that's not too common in Dynamics Range plugins is the idea of an upward compressor. And I remember this is something I first read about 
ages ago. I bought Bob Katz's first book, Mastering Audio, and he was b beating the drum about how upward compressors should be the future. But then I never saw too many companies actually develop them. And here we have an upward compressor as one of the fundamental four modules. Can you give us a sense for where you think this would be useful? What are the pros and cons of using this approach to compression instead of the conventional downward type of compression? Sure. Um, so with the different modules, you get different things, you know, uh, the upwards compression. So anything quieter than the threshold will be made louder. Downwards compression, anything above the threshold gets pushed down. So, you know, it, it's kind of the opposite. And if you have a track where you want to just really dial in where that bottom floor of the music is, it's a really nice thing to be able to pick where the bottom of the floor is. If it's a pop tune, you can bring everything more front. If it's, you know, a, a quieter track that you want to stay quieter, you can keep things down. And uh, it's really nice to have that control because most compressors, when you put on something, it just makes everything loud and uh, you don't have to deal with that. Right. Very cool. Well, I think at this point, the best thing for people at home to do is to check this tool out for themselves. You can go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out this plugin and anything else Plugin Alliance makes totally for free for two weeks. Or just go get the mega subscription bundle. In my opinion, one of the best deals out there in the whole world of pro audio. And this will just be another plugin that's included as part of your subscription bundle. Big thanks to uh, Glenn Schick for joining us. Glenn, great to have you on as always. If you haven't checked it out, check out our first interview with Glenn, where we spoke in incredible length and detail about his journey in the world of audio, him transitioning from a conventional mastering studio with big, gigantic, lovely speakers uh, out there in the room to going to basically laptop, computer, headphones, mastering anywhere in the world from Southeast Asia to Seattle, Washington, where he now is. If you don't believe that it's possible to master on headphones, you're wrong, because Glenn Schick does it every day, doing beautiful work at the highest level, and uh, so glad to have you on. Thanks again, Glenn, for joining us today. Thanks, Justin. All right. Thank you guys again for hanging out with us. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time.